me, hi, the Cosmic Mama from Women of the Stars. And I'm here to share with you an observation I think is pretty important, something I think people can use. So I decided to make this video just for you. And I've discussed with a few people before the term Pokemon. And I have my own way of expressing this, what a Pokemon actually is in terms of relationships with people. Now, Pokemon is short for Pocket Monster. That's the original name. That's what a Pokemon, that's what Pokemon stands for, right? It's this card, it's this, or as the game is, it's a card, right, that you pull out of your pocket when you're playing the game. But on this show, that's what it is, right? It's a little pocket monster. It's a little monster that this guy keeps in his pocket and he whips it out when he needs help, right? When he needs some defense, you know? So how can people be like a Pokemon? Now, some people use their friends like Pokemons or pocket monsters. That's how I feel. And they pull their friends out when they need them, slam them down, you know? And for me, I see this as one-sided friendships. Think about it, because the person's in your pocket until you need them. They don't pull you out of their pocket. So it's one-sided. And how does it apply? What behaviors do you need to recognize? It's important to note that people shouldn't be used in this way. Relationships should be based on mutual respect and support rather than just using someone for personal gain, right? However, here are some ways in which people can metaphorically be used as Pokemon. Now, consider this. Have you ever felt like someone in your life only reaches out to you when they need your emotional support, but they're not there for you in the same way? This could be a sign of an imbalance in the relationship where one person is only taking and not giving back in emotional support. The next one, had you ever felt like someone only contacts you when they need a favor or they need help, but it doesn't maintain a balanced give and take relationship? This could be a sign of a one-sided relationship where the person is only interested in what they can get from you. And I knew this woman, I swear, because I am friendly and kind and I I am useful and I do see myself as a helper. And it's okay to be a helper. It's okay to be a giver. But and you you give in a way where you're not being run down. You know what I'm saying? Cuz I know a lot of people like me I enjoy giving and I enjoy helping. But then there gets to be a point where people are consistently asking you and never giving you anything in return. And I believe sometimes you can totally just give and expect nothing in return, but move on. But if someone is keep tapping the well and tapping the well until the well runs dry, that's taking advantage. It's ridiculous. It was a particular woman And I had done her one favor, gave her some information. And then, you know, I was doing these things. And then it was like, can you pick my son up? And can you meet me at the nail salon? And can you? But the thing was, in all the things that she was asking me to do, it was always like me going completely out of my way to make something convenient for her and to fix something or do something for her. But it was never a time where we were just hanging out. It was never a hangout situation. So it became very obvious that that person was a user. And you say, oh, you know, how do you know this? I'll tell you how I know. The last time she asked me to swing by and do this, I said, "Um, hey, maybe you can call me when you just want to hang out and have fun, go to a movie or something like that. And she never called me again. There goes Archer, I'll let him out. So that made it very obvious 
So think about that. Whenever you have to tell somebody no, whenever you have to ask them for something in return, and I think a lot of us don't ask people for favors or we don't ask for an exchange because we already know we're fear of losing the relationship at times. So we don't even challenge that. We don't even do anything about it. But when you have to say no. Now, I will say this. I learned from David Covey's um, Seven Habits of a Highly Effective Person. They said when, or he said, when someone is asking you for a favor, but it's going to take time out of what you're doing for yourself or whatever other goals or things that you're working on that you maybe exchange and say, well, I'm busy and I'm doing this, but if you can help me with that in exchange, I can do this. You can test that out and see what happens, but we'll get back to this Pokemon thing. Now, another way a person can be used as a Pokemon is this. Have you ever noticed Someone in your social circle who only seems to maintain friendships for the purpose of networking or advancing their career and social status. This type of behavior can indicate or be indicative of a shallow, insincere relationships where one person is using others to further their own interests. And sometimes, too, you just, it doesn't take much to see this because they bust in real quickly and they're super excited and they want to latch on super quickly. And sometimes, you know, people love you and they do admire you. They might know you, but then you you really have to ask yourself, like, what what is on this person's mind? Like, are they truly genuine or are they just trying to, be in the middle of some type of social group or circumstances where they can just advance their career? What is it that they're offering you? Or what is, where is the exchange? Where's the energy exchange? How do you feel when someone seeks validation or approval from you, but doesn't offer this same level of validation? This could be a sign of a manipulative person where the person is always seeking validation without reciprocating. I get it. I totally get that one too, because they're always in need, in this state of need, and they need you to prop them up and prop up their feelings. And what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? I don't know. You know, and they're always, you know, they can get real needy and real whiny. And and then, you know, when you're sad, they have no they have no recognition of your own emotions. It's a, it's a funny thing when someone they want help with their emotions and their needs, but then they're not able to reciprocate. Like you could be sick. You notice this too. Like, think of it as like. Have you ever been like nodding off sleeping and that person just keeps talking and talking like they don't see your head nodding. They don't see you passing out or people they see, they see you're tired or you're hungry or you're thirsty, whatever it is that you're going through. Like they have, you know, and you wince because you got a headache and you're, you know, got a pinched nerve in your shoulder, but you'll notice that they'll never compensate in any way. But they'll tell you all their problems, you know, all their special needs, all their special circumstances, how how you need to accommodate them. And they don't accommodate you, you know, it's really interesting how people are, but they'll use those special circumstances and, oh, you know, all their little issues and stuff like that. They'll pile them right up on your plate and make it all your problem, but your problems are like nowhere in sight. Now think about this. How do you feel when someone only values you for your knowledge or your skills or your expertise? That's an interesting one. So it seems like everything is transactional. So they pay attention to you when you have something to offer, 
you know, fixing things for them and, you know, giving rides or, you know, things like that. Like, you're so smart, you know, <laughs> and it's real slick because there's a way that you can be helpful, but then you kind of got to figure this out. There's a balance. Does the person compensate you? Even if it's not money, like, you know, I want to buy you dinner because I appreciate what you did for me. You know, I just, you know, I want to do something for you, you know, to make up for that because that really, really helped me. And you'll see that's a huge difference in what, you know, from one person to the next is that person, they really don't want to feel like a freeloader or a user and they want to offer you something in return. It's a huge difference. Now, let's see. How do you feel when someone uses you for material gain? They want to borrow your money or your possessions without considering the impact on you. That's the thing, right? If something is going to inconvenience you, but they want it anyway. There was this thing about cruelty that I read. And I'm going to look this up real quick. Real, really quickly. I think it was in the, yeah, it was in the 21 rules or 21 lessons from Merlin. It says three time signs of cruelty in a person. A person, the number one thing was to needlessly frighten animals. That was number one. Needlessly tear plants and trees. That's number two. And to needlessly ask for favors. That's number three. Those were three signs of cruelty in a person, within a person. That's interesting, right? People that are just, they will put you out, you know, oh, you know, everything for them is a problem. And all their problems are stacked up nice on your plate. And it's just a huge sign that someone is selfish and exploitive. You know, now, have you ever been in a relationship where a person seeks to control or manipulate you for their own benefit without considering your autonomy or well-being? They want to control all kinds of parts of your life, your friendships. You know, sometimes people do it with like this and they'll say, well, you should be careful. Watch out, you know, and. Well, I'm just trying to help you, but if I were you, I wouldn't do that. It's 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 really interesting because it comes off as concern, but then we're, we're, when a person is passing on a, a fear of some sort, that always makes me a little bit curious, you know? Now, because this autonomy, you know, it's up to you to choose your relationships. And I think it's a little different when you ask somebody, hey, what do you think about this? Or how do you feel about that? Because you were seeking advice. But then when outside people kind of tell you who to talk to, who not to talk to, who to be friends with, it's, it's a little complicated, you know, it's complicated. I guess unless someone's like a serious, Serial, you know, serially destructive, like highly destructive, you know, because I, I believe personally, like you might ask me what I feel or how I think about something. And then even with that, if you ask me, well, what, what you should do, I don't know what you should do. You should go with your gut. But I guess I'm just not into telling people who to be friends with and who not to be friends with, things like that. But um uh, you know, some people are quick with those types of advice, but you have to just wonder why, why does this person not want me to talk to these people, you know, or there's ways to be more controlling though, you know, when it talks about that, when a person seeks to control or manipulate you for their benefit. And usually that does start with isolation. Yeah. And it's ignoring the boundaries, boundaries and agency. 
it's important to recognize and address these unhealthy patterns so that you can have connections based on mutual respect trust, and genuine care for one another. Healthy relationships involve open communication because guess what? If I can't tell you that Ugh, that made me uncomfortable or if I can't tell you I don't like it when you do this to me or if you say this to me or do you mind, but I, I, really, I really don't want to do that. Or I'm sorry, but based on my schedule, I'm too busy. And I, I, I just couldn't add that on my plate. And now is a time where we're starting to recognize that we can't put all our things on someone else's plate. And we kind of recognize, oh, this person is taking time for themselves to get more rest. Or this person is taking time and they're trying to save their money and they're not trying to spend their money or they're, you know, we're learning to accept no for an answer. And then we're also learning that it's okay to say no. It's okay to self-resource. It's okay to be loyal to yourself. It's okay for you to protect yourself, love yourself and do what it takes to preserve your own energy because we're coming from a space where our parents and our parents' parents, like they didn't know how to preserve their own energy or say no. And so always coming from this place of half empty when they give, then you have people become burnt out. You know, you wonder why people being snappy and snippy and they're like, I was doing you a favor, you know, but if you're, if you're doing someone a favor and it's going to be making you pissed off and crabby, Please keep the favor, you know. We don't we don't want the person to come from a place of um of lack and be giving out of uh, in a time of lack, wearing the person out, burning the person out, and then wondering why do the people have attitudes and that's where a lot of resentment comes from. So we're trying to make a change, make a change for the better. And the cosmic mama, so have a great great week and leave some input. Let me know what you think about that. Let me know how you feel. Let me know if you had some examples of this or does this resonate? Uh, Check the channel out, other videos, like, share, and subscribe. It's kind of like what Terry Tuesdays are about or even what our shows are really about is Getting to this point of understanding ourselves and understanding people and understanding why we operate the way that we do. And it's kind of my life's goal is to just understand, right? Understand people and understand the world around me and to help myself to navigate my, you know, how I function in the world. And, um, Just remain positive, you know, remain in the game. 